yeah. respect given towards the Caitlyn. You've got the Rumble, you've got the Mauka, you got a lot of these big power picks, but there's that Nico you were talking about, Azale. Yeah, the Nico not going to be given over to Gao, but Rumble showcased by Ben for the first time his entire career in the last series. The great effect. Uh, that is one of those picks that you could be looking towards. Maokai Jace also available and really high prio. Could pair well also with that Rumble if they wanted to go that route. So I think there's a lot of powerful options here. And I'm curious to see exactly what the game plan is because I think they will probably pick up the Rumble here. The Shy has shown he's a monster on that pick. But I'm curious if they think, hey, we're fine to give the Rumble. Let's go for the Aatrox into it. Let's see if we can kind of just have the Shy beat Bin in the laning phase and then outscale to a later portion of the game and then play for those big fights with the Shy. But the first pick of the draft for BLG is actually the Vi. This is one of those champions that can be very devastating, specifically in combination with Nico. Also, giving the opportunity for some powerful ganks, some powerful playmaking, especially once you get the ult, similar to what the Jarvan may have otherwise been able to provide if it escaped the band. And it's also denying one of the powerful AD jungle pairings here. You know, when you think about the most popular pairings at Worlds for AD, it's Jarvan and it's Vi. Jarvan's banned, Vi's now taken away. When you go Nico, yes, Rumble is there, but if they do grab Rumble, they're going to be pretty heavy on on AP already, and they're going to be having to find some sort of other uh, AD jungle pick. You can, of course, go to like Lee Sin. You can kind of, uh, go to things like the Viego as well. Uh, Weiwei, obviously, really happy on the Poppy also, but it is obviously a lower damage option. And of course, that second champion locked in for BLG, the Zaya. You guys saw the numbers pop up 98% pick ban presence so far here in the tournament. Absolutely incredible. It's been banned out a ton by both these teams. The fact that it got through that first part of the ban phase, I'm not surprised to see it picked up first rotation for BLG, Aphelios, and the Rumble locked in for Weibo. Yeah, and the Zaya ban kind of had to get dropped because of that Jarvan, right? Because Shun performed so well in this last series with something like 25-3 and 25 around something that crazy. sort of KDA in that previous series. Absolutely dominated. Yeah, and I mean, especially with the amount of AD carry bans that were thrown their way as well. The Sinja, though, picked up for Yago. This is something that he's been incredibly good on domestically, and now we're going to see if he can try and bring it out to the international stage. It is something where you can look to try and at least beat back Weibo, who are going to be playing this incredibly short-range composition, and it looks like they're probably going to try and set up here for BLG to try and have a little bit of that option when it comes to keeping Weibo at arm's length. And Renata now, again, banned against here by Weibo. This is 10 straight games that either Crisp has played Renata or has been banned against them. They really did start this march towards the priority of these enchanters down in bot lane, playing for bot lane 2v2. The Renata going to get banned out. Uh, when Light, you know, is able to get that strong support pairing for Crisp, when they have that dominant 2v2, they've had so much success playing in that style. And over on the other side, it's support focused, but the different way, right? You're banning out the Nautilus. You don't want to allow on to have the engage potential, especially when you've got light on this immobile AD carry that can be under extreme threat from those powerful engage options. They want to make sure that's off the table. The Wukong, the final ban of the draft here for BLG. Yeah, so it's another really good team fighting AD. I think it's actually a great pairing as well with both these kind of AOE ultimates that come in uh, from the Rumble as well as from that Nico. So a good ban there. But now we have to find out, are they going to leave fifth pick you know, four, uh, four on, are they going to be playing towards that support wing condition or are they going to save it for Bin? Yeah, I think you take the Aatrox here for Bin. He's already played it twice. I uh, open that top side. I think that works really well into the Rumble. And then you're always able to leave that opportunity then for on on this counter pick. The Blitzcrank ban as well kind of says to me that Weibo are imagining this is going to be the game plan. They're like, look, we want to try and secure some sort of enchanter support here. So we're not just going to enter into a Blitzcrank lane into the counter pick. And I think it's interesting, right? You know, the obvious thing is to go for that top lane, but some of these times teams are just really focused on the contested support. So they want to have another denial as kind of the additional ban. Uh, but in this case, obviously, putting value on that fifth pick support counter pick. This would be definitely an AD option. <laughs> Haven't seen a lot of it and is absolutely wow. feast or famine. It's going to get locked in the Belveth for Weiwei. I like it, though, when you've got lanes that you can kind of use to push in and get big advantages. When I look towards the bot lane, the Aphelios, you look like we're going to get the Luda there as well. Doesn't scream to me that you're going to have push against the Zaya that can now counter pick with an opportunity to go for an enchanter support for yourself on that bot side of the map as well. So it kind of is a little bit tough here. If the Shy doesn't get control over that top side, I feel Belveth won't be able to get these invades off, and she's going to start to fall behind. And this is the first career game on Belveth for Weiwei. So first time bringing it out in a world semifinal. Chris again, sticking with those enchanters, does go towards the Milio. Won't be able to, you know, grab something that is really a lane counter on the side of BLG, but it will be the Rel. That final piece of the puzzle here does give them some good engage to be able to follow up, you know, alongside that buy set up potentially uh, for the feather pull here from Elk, for the follow up from Yagao as well. 
but when you're looking on the other side, it just feels like the entire game to me for Weibo is going to be about that top side of the map, about pushing lanes here in mid, in top, getting Weiwei involved early with these invades, trying to create a really big lead because Belveth is absolutely feast or famine. And honestly, it feels like a huge event for Eliza and Xiaohu. I mean, that's your sole engage tool. That's the sole person that can try and set up for these fights. And Xiaohu hasn't been performing. When you look at him coming in towards Worlds, I think a lot of people are like, no, this is the moment Xiaohu can kind of step up, toss off the mantle of Emperor of Spring, falling short of Worlds, but he hasn't got to see see that yet. And now against Yagao, he needs to set up here with this composition. It's going to be interesting, because the other question is, do they even have to engage when you're playing against Virel? There's not really that many options on the other side. And I think Weibo has, in a lot of cases, been very good with their counter-engage. And I think both Melio, as well as this Nico, really do excel in the counter-engage, the amount a setup that they're going to have. If you're piling in with the Vi, all of a sudden the peel, the he shields, the heals come through from Chris, from Xiaohu. That can create the space that Light needs to take over a fight. I mean, you bring an equalizer down on top of a botched engage. Even Belveth, if you try to engage on this carry type of jungler and you don't 100 to zero her, the ability to resist damage and weather that storm in time for the team to come in and help you is there. I'm excited here for this first game. I can't wait to see where we're going to go. We were all talking a lot about the junglers specifically and the way that they've been playing. The desk even highlighted it. Kobe was mentioning how Weiwei just loved going bottom in that entire quarterfinal, just over and over and over again. Shun, more of a yo-yo across the rift. He'll go top, he'll go bot, he'll go top, he'll go bot. But when you're up against Weiwei, who's got that pressure, I'm curious if Shun is just going to gravitate even more so to the bottom half of the rift, too. Yeah, Lolly Sports Stats actually tweeted out some kill, kill maps where you can see where all their kills are pre-14. For Weibo, it's basically only in bot lane. Like, everything is bot lane. They are very clearly playing heavily towards this, and with the Enchanter, they'll be able to. All right, as we're waiting on the minions to spawn, a reminder, you saw it pop up on the screen a moment ago. You can connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming to grab the exclusive Brom W emote that the players have been spamming on each other the whole time here as the ward is going to spot gonna out Weibo doing a late invade here towards those Raptors. But look at, Bin is coming. They have the extra man defending. BLG have four here, and we don't see the extra people for Weibo just yet. Level one could get spicy and get spicy quick. The shy is going to be found there with the ward in the brush. Now Weiwei and Xiaohu need to try to get out of here. Flame Spitter from the shy just buying a little bit of extra time for his teammates to continue the long way home. But the flash Q3 and the shy is in trouble. He drops down the ignite, but what's it going to do? On continues the chase as the shy flashes out. He may be able to survive here. On going to continue after him. The Shy, he doesn't die, but his lane's in a real bad spot. I mean, this is an absolute disaster. You're playing zero sums, no TP rumble, starting top against a full HP bin, and Xiaohu got completely zoned away. Look where he is on the minimap right now. This is an unmitigated disaster. He hasn't even gotten one minion of experience yet, and I think that Yagao actually stacked the wave to pull towards him, so... Weibo off to a, about the worst start possible. And a lot of when we look at these two teams facing off in summer was, okay, can we try and get an advantage on BLG side for being against the Shy? Then we can try and just leave them to their own devices as we look towards the rest oh. of the map. And uh, Bin has certainly got a bit of an advantage in this one. I mean, he's going to have to base. And remember, this is no TP. He's going to be down likely two levels right off the rip from this play. This is absolutely horrible for them. And I'm just surprised that Weibo didn't pull up Chris because it's so obvious that you're going to be going for this type of invade. Anytime you're playing with Belveth, your first camp is their Raptors. It's not your Raptors. On moved up, Chris didn't. That was the difference. Especially when we said, hey, look, your bot lane actually is going to be in a bit of a better spot than we were talking about in draft, but you still want to try and get push on the map to facilitate this Belveth to keep invading, keep getting in the space of this vibe. But when the Shy is completely out of topside and you don't really have as much control as you'd like over mid lane as well, it's going to make it very tough for this Belveth Back to play with the map as she wants. At least for the shy, there was a cannon minion there. So, I mean, I think it's going to not potentially be as bad as it might have been. But 17 to 4, it's such a big lead here. He'll be able to mop up some of these underneath the turret. But that level one, such a disaster for Weibo. They're going to have to claw their way back from the disadvantages they had there. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see how, how it all shakes out as far as the total experience is advantage. But when he walked back to lane, he was still one when Ben hit three, right? So, yeah. you do see that a uh, temporary massive XP disadvantage. On the other side, there was a cost, of course, for Elk, because Elk did get zoned off. Weiwei getting caught out now as he tries to invade the enemy jungle. The Belveth not wanting to fall behind. Ends up losing a little bit of HP. Luckily, does not have to spin the Flash. Can go back down into the bot side river and claim the Scuttle Crab thanks to the lane push that his bottom lane has acquired. Yeah, exactly. So Weibo's bot lane, really a lot of pressure on them now. You know, given how badly everything went on that top side, the only advantage they had was that Crisp and Light were in lane and could zone Elk, right? So they did create a CS advantage there. Elk picked up quite a bit as that wave did crash, but... Light and Crisp have got to pound this bot lane 2v2 now because the soul lanes are just in a tough spot. 
Shun clearing out his blue, hanging around on this bottom side of the map, but not going through anything here just yet. You can see Weiwei invading again. You talked about the importance of Belveth stealing away enemy raptors, wanting to do it at level one. He's going to come back around, find the second spawn of him, and Weiwei should now also be able to get this Scuttle Crab on the top half of the map, too. So double Scuttle early on is going to feel pretty good as Bin goes in pretty aggressively here, finds a nice trade on the shot. Yeah, I think a large portion of this is going to be seeing, hey, can Weiwei try and keep up this pressure? But Shun now has an advantage where he can move into the bot side, hasn't been spotted. There is a ward here, but it might be a little bit too late as on has flash. Well, yeah, looks like Shun's just going to step in the vision there real quick, so Weibo should know what's going on. I really want to see if Vin can actually hold that wave off the turret, though, because he TP'd back and the Shy had no buy. Immediate flash engage coming out from on as Chris is forced to flash away. He's nearly killed, but he keeps himself alive just a little bit longer. It's first blood. Back over to the rail as BLG are on the board. Nicely done. Beautiful flash engage there from on. Shun with a follow-up, but they can't quite turn it around. Chris couldn't get away. Um, but again, on that top side, I am really interested to see what the Shy is going to do from this position because he had no buy. Finn gets the buy, comes back, prevents the crash, and now he's going to try to lock him into this wave state where he doesn't want the Shy to ever be able to crash the wave and then actually look for that base. So right. Finn is trying to hold this off the turret as much as he can. He's going to try to stall out these ranged minions and say, you don't get the base, you don't get the buy. That is the advantage that I've gained off of this level one. Yeah, I think he needs to pull way, way up here if he wants to try and do something, but... Weiwei needs to get back to this bot side to try and protect his camps from Shun, but we're going to see here, I think they thought that Shun had gone away after they saw him initially poke his head out on that ward, and then Chris not quite able to get back in behind the tower in time, get enough healing off as well, and you can see how much damage has gone onto the uh, BLG side, but they just can't respond. Exactly, they tried to throw everything in there, the summoner heal, the cozy campfire, the warm hugs, everything in Melio's kit, but just not enough still. The damage was there from BLG, they're first on the board. However, we look at how close the gold is, the first blood with an assist is worth 600 gold. There's not even that much difference here between the teams. Yeah, absolutely. And there, the Shy hits six, uses the Equalizer immediately to crash that wave. So he's not going to get stuck in this long extended laning phase uh, that Bin wanted them in with no items. Does go back to base, gets the tier two boots. You can see a number of them have. So Weibo, their solo laners honestly doing a really good job of recovering from what was a difficult situation at level one. Yeah, and when I'm looking at Weibo, one of the things I immediately notice here on the scoreboard, the massive difference in terms of the amount of camps farmed in the jungle. Weiwei is up significantly there on this Belveth, so trying to keep pushing the tempo on this carry-style jungler as he hangs out down here in the bot lane now, but the ward placed over the wall is going to spot him out. I think he's done a relatively good job, though, of getting control now, using the push to trap him bot side and mid to start to teeter over towards, I was going to say Dragon, but Shun is here to try and protect I think it's just getting vision down before they started up. But you can see at the moment BLG trying to respond. Now on finds a stun there on light, but immediately has to disengage. As you can see, control over that river still belongs to Weiwei. He's got his smite. He'll secure that as Shun wanted to come up, potentially fight for it. But Weiwei again maintains control over these scuttle crabs throughout the entire early game so far. I think Shun has been doing a good job of tracking where Weiwei wants to go, though, and he's kind of keeping him check here, making sure they can't use the advantage you had off both waves. And because Weibo hesitate, they don't actually get to take the dragon immediately. So BLG are then in position to respond, and now it's going to become a case of, all right, I'm going to steal these raptors, try and set a vision on this top side, and more than likely play for that rift herald that's in 30 seconds, maybe even catch out Shun as he moves in here. Wait, wait, level 6 versus Shun, only level 5. It'd be an easy knock up here, but I would expect for Weiwei, Shun is not going to win this 1v1. So much damage coming out from Weiwei, not enough to force a kill. The flash wouldn't have been available anyway, but Shun is now forced back out of that quadrant of the map. And that's huge because there's not anything on this bottom side. Shun hasn't hit level 6 yet, and he really wants to have that before the Rift Herald spawns, but now you're in a position as Weiwei where you get to clear out Raptors, immediately fall back over towards this Rift Herald with the push that you have on this top side. Thanks to the Shy doing a good job, despite the early deficit, I'm now bringing it back in that top lane match. And now it finally means he's able to take away multiple camps from Shun. You know, he hadn't been able to get them. He had been farming heavily on his side of the map, but now he's going to push him out, get the Raptors. He's going to take the red. He's going to get the Krux. It's going to be a full top side clear of the enemy jungle. And that could potentially mean a Herald after. That could potentially mean a dive top after. I don't think that Weibo can really contest this because Weiwei is still moving up. So he's just going to trade for that Herald kind of as expected on the top side. And that is so much more valuable when you are playing on this Belveth. You get the little Voidling spawns so that strong. are coming out. That really does help the push. Plus, you get that additional empowerment from taking that Void Eye. But even just look at the little purple bars that are underneath Weiwei and Shun's portraits. That's your levels. And you can see how far ahead Weiwei is. Plus, he's going to be able to go in onto this top side, take Raptors, zone Bane off of this wave, as well as it's better crash from the Shy, and keep full control over this top side continuously. This is becoming a massive 
massive issue now for BLG. And honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if Weiwei just gives a ton of those resources to the Shy with the Rift Herald. Yeah. They just take down first tower and get this rumble rolling. The Shy doing a great job bouncing back here. This is a huge wave crashing into the yeah. turret that Weiwei's presence is now going to completely deny that from Bin. The Aatrox, we were talking about how great that lane state was early on, but now it's rubber banded entirely back the other way. I mean, it's, it's so rough, and credit to the Shy. He actually slow stacked that wave while his jungler is taking Herald. Really well played. Chris defends the red buff on that bot side, and he doesn't even have to commit the Herald for the play. He just walks up. Bin knows he's going to die with the Ignite and the Equalizer available if he tries to stay under that tower. So they get a couple plates. They deny, I want to say, three plus waves uh, to Bin as well. And he just uses that tempo recall, gets back down to pick up the red buff that was defended again by Crisp. So this is really well played by Weibo across the map. I'm super impressed. And this looks like the Weibo from earlier in the year. Not the one that's going to, hey, we're going to take Poppy and dive you over and over again level three. It's, hey, we're going to try and get some sort of control here over in the mid lane. We're going to start playing up towards the Shy in that top side as well like making sure that we're in a position where we can actually play towards the shy on carries and use the pressure that Chow who had been so famous for coming across from RNG. And it's so interesting right because when they came into worlds everyone's like yeah you're gonna play to the shy that's how they got to worlds yeah. and it became this total pivot towards bot side where that's all Weiwei was doing these poppy dives towards bot side all these moves down there constantly the emphasis on the support counter pick as well for crisp and these range supports that have been so powerful for them but Clearly, trying to be flexible, trying to catch BLG a bit off guard, and thus far, it absolutely is working. But of course, BLG, not too far behind whatsoever. It is just a 600 gold lead at this point. Right. And they are the ones with the engage on their side. So if you do misstep, if you do make that mistake, BLG are more equipped to punish it. Whereas Weibo really need to push the pace because when you don't have engage, I feel you heavily have to dominate the objective game and force your opponents to come to you because that is the way that you choose your fights is when you're stacking those dragons, when you're threatening those barons and they have to engage into you. And that's where I do get a little bit worried because Yagao has a lot of control in his back pocket for that. But Weibo hovering Shun is is available. Yeah, Shun recalling nearby, but Weiwei's gonna dash forward. As you can see, Shun now coming in to reinforce Bin, but he's burning, burning, burning up the equalizer over the top, and the Shy picks up the kill. Nicely done by Weibo. Bin waited way too long. He wanted to try to bait this play out. I think he overestimated how much damage he could take. And that late flash really means he gets punished. Now the entire tower is likely to fall. On's trying to come here to reinforce. Man, Aatrox can be deceptively tanky, but a drain tank doesn't work when you cut his healing. The ignite just absolutely wrecks him. And now that's another massive amount of minions that are just crashing into the turret. Also the fact like he's going for this hex trigger early, he wants to try and get a ton of that early magic resist. So he's a ways away off of actually having a lot of that uh, AD damage that he wants his kit to try and stay off, even going towards things like Core Drinker are going to take a little while. Okay, hold on. Maybe a little bit of a scrap here in mid. Chris comes up to reinforce, make sure Shao Hu's okay. On stepping away there from the Ultra Mega Fire Kick, so nothing's coming of it. And one of the dangerous things about itemizing in towards something like a Hexdrinker, when you're against a lane bully like Rumble, you want to rush towards it, but there's an AD carry, you know, jungler style here. Way, way going to be engaged on here as Shun goes in. The Vi ulti leads the charge, but now in the back line, they're still keeping him alive. Way, way getting away. He makes his way to the blast cone, and Way, way survives the counterattack. Where's it at from Weibo? They're not going to get anything back for it, but the fact that there's no kill for BLG was huge. Now Shao Hu's coming in, looking to lock down Yagao. He tries to get away. Skin of the weekend going to work the shot. Flash is over, and he burns them all up. A double kill back to the top laner from Weibo. These guys came to fight. Scatter the Week isn't going to work on the Shy. The Giga Chat top laner flashes past it and roasts him. The Shy honestly popping off and saving that play. Shao Hu whiffs on the ult, whiffs on the tango bars, and the Shy says, who needs CC when I can just roast them alive? Credit to Crisp as well. Flashing to get in range for the heal, for the breath of life, for the shield. Everything coming through and everything needed to barely keep Weiwei alive. Yeah. That is a big fight and a big turnaround here from Weibo. Yeah, I mean, really, really good job here. You can see Shao Hu spots out that they're all there. Weiwei gets caught, but the, just being able to at least zone even for Shao Hu there is big. Because as you say, Chris gets timed into flashing, get the shield, get the heal. The blast cone barely interrupts Shun on the back end of that as well. And here, Shao Hu tries to get the flash in, just barely misses, but the Shy's in the perfect position. Yeah, just watch the Shy right here, is able to flash in over top of the scatter. Beautifully timed there. Nicely done by the Shy. Picks up the double kill.
And you can see he's feeling oh, good he's about that it. one. Oh, he's going again. He's okay. going again. We're not done. Bin falls in the 1v1. The shy, despite a disastrous level one. Isaac, you said it at the start of this game. It's as bad as it could have been without giving up a kill. And the shy is now 4 0 and 0. It is a massive lead for Weibo right now, 14 minutes into the game. And they're going to start up the second Drake of the game. What did he think was going to happen if he gave the shy rumble? Like, even set behind early from the level one, he's popping off again. And I mean, this is reminiscent of the shy right the way back in 2018. Dominate lane and then go on to win the whole bloody tournament. It's so interesting because I feel like with the Nico coming through early, BLG thought that they weren't going to go for the Rumble. I think they didn't think they would go towards the double AP soul lanes. Maybe thought that they had limited them enough on the AD jungle picks that they wouldn't be able to have success. But Weiwei locking in the Belveth here has really enabled it very, very effectively. He's farming incredibly well. He's put on pressure. He's taking objectives. Wow. And check it out in the lane economy snapshot here, powered by MasterCard, 2,400 gold lead in the top lane. That is ridiculous. And it's literally the reverse staircase of what we usually see for a Weibo, <laughs> where it's like, it's actually going to be more the shy who's trying to sustain in that top side. But now that he's got given the resources, he's in a terrifying spot. And I mean, look, it's 103 gold in that bot lane, but light is going to scale so well with this Melio as well. Like, BLG need to find a way to slow this down, or they are just going to get absolutely overrun in these fights. I mean, it's already a three and a half thousand gold advantage for the side of Weibo. The Drakes are tied. Weiwei's working on the second Rift Herald of the game here. As soon as it spawns, Weibo's going to be oh taking that as the Shy just picks up another one. This man is on a mission today. Yeah, on to off real quick. The Shy finds him. And it's just nice positioning there, right? You can see, hey, look, we are trading that Rift Herald on top side. Let's get the vision. It's your standard play for the support, but not in the jungle. And they're not having a top laner. Pop Blossom lands. They tie him up in the tangle barbs, and Weiwei's ready to bring him down. Alley oop. The kill goes over to light. And now the push comes through. These guys are ready to absolutely wreck this top side. Beautiful plays coming out from Weibo. This game is getting out of control. Weibo are stomping them as BLG were trying to push for that tier one bot, but they get a kill around mid. They move top. They get a kill up there. They push in. They don't get don't even have to use the Herald yet. They're going to be able to still have that for later, try to take a tier one bot or even push for a tier two. Weibo are in an incredible position. And what a shocking start to this game is now the Shy is 3,000 gold ahead. He's got Equalizer. I don't know if you even want it. Yeah, this is tough, man. I don't even think you win these two V1s. He's going to go ahead, drop the Equalizer to zone Yagao away. Turns on the flame spinner. His shun goes in for the ulti. They try to wombo combo him down, and the shutdown goes over to Yagao. But what about the counter punch? The TP comes in from Xiaohu, but they disengage in time. Shun and Yagao picking up a critical shutdown there onto the Shy. But man, he still puts so much damage down while they did it. They have to find moments like that. It's the only way they can get him. Big moment, though, because as you say, they quickly got in, dispatched him, and you burnt the TP from Xiaohu. So you kind of disrupt all this tempo advantage that Weibo started to build up because you can see push in top, control over mid. It was starting to become a bit of a nightmare for BLG, so they're starting to slow that onslaught a little bit. And that's 850 gold in the pocket of Yagao. That was a huge shutdown, but my real concern for BLG is what is Bin going to get done this game? I mean, look at his itemization. He's got a Hex Drinker, and he's going into Lethality. There is a lot of physical damage on the other side. You have nothing, no HP, no armor, no resistances. Light and Weiwei are going to kill you in a second. And I feel like they've been completely caught off guard by Weibo's stuff, but also the way Weibo are bringing out picks like the Belvet. I mean, last time we got to see Bin bring out the Rumble. Now it's Weiwei bringing out the Belvet. These teams are leveling up as playoffs goes on, and BLG were not prepared this time. Going back to what we were talking about in the draft, Azale, you mentioned how, yeah, they banned the Jax away from Bin because he had this monster performance on it. So many of Weibo's, or not Weibo's, excuse me, BLG's wins feel like they come out of big performances from Bin, but he's just locked out of the game this time as the Equalizer lands on Yagao. Weiwei's not going to close the gap in time to make anything else happen, but they force their opponents back. It's Weibo using the Herald here in the bottom lane to force down that Tier 1 turret. On gets thrown up in the air. The Pop Blossom's running to make sure it gets done. And Xiaohu picks up his first kill of the game. 7 to 2 here, 18 and a half minutes in. You play with fire, you're going to get burned. And On learns it once again as they get that charge off. And Weibo will back it out. But it is Shun on that top side, the split pushing Vi taking down a top tower. <laughs> yeah. 
Van is on a mission to get some gold back, but this is looking terrible for BLG. Here, look, if your top laner doesn't have a, a Divine Sunder, you might as well bring it yourself up to that <laughs> top lane. So at least getting the Sheen procs on the tower gets something, but you've already got push. You get to fall back. Dragon in 30 seconds. You can't do anything. Yeah. Sean thought he was going to wrap around, maybe look for some sort of a pincer attack, but there's nothing to be found. The Shy's left alone here in the bottom lane. He will pick up the tier two turret down there. Five to two in the turret count is a big reason why this is a 5,000 gold lead here now. It's so hard for BLG to try to fight back from any sort of a fair fight. And now this, this really is just so problematic for them. Great, they have some engaged. They have the ability to look for picks, but Weibo are so ridiculously strong at this point. They're going to show up to every single objective, and they're going to dare you to fight them. They're going to continue stacking towards this as the Horizon Focus is even done for the Shy. So he's going full on damage in towards the Void Staff as that third item. He is going to be destroying people. Um, myself and Azale got a chance to meet Teddy backstage, who's the Chinese cast before we came in. And he was talking about Weibo, and they said, look, we have things that we haven't had to show yet. We got through without having to face an Eastern team. We have the opportunity to play our style and bring out some of these new picks. And you're seeing how terrifying they are and why this team was considered a super team when they were formed in the LPL. So many conversations that I saw leading up to the semifinals here this week were asking about, oh, has Weibo's run been fraudulent? Do these guys really deserve semifinals? You mentioned only playing the Western teams. Yeah, they played MAD, they played G2, they played Fnatic, they played Energy, then they played Energy again. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, this is where they get exposed. They're not looking too exposed right now. No, not at all. I mean, they, they did play an Eastern team. They just lost, right? But here, this would be their first win against an Eastern team at the tournament. Really would be a statement game to come into the semifinals and just blow out BLG in game number one. No one can really question if you deserve to be here, if you are on the same level as these style of teams, when you bring out this kind of a performance. I think especially when a lot of the reasons that we were kind of looking at over the course of this weekend was, hey, you want to go into red side, you want to get that counter pick support, but the way this draft has been set up, Weibo have been totally fine with getting control over that bot side, banning out the early Renata, um, and then making things uncomfortable then for BLG bot side. They have full control on top side thanks to the rumble pick and stuff. So you really do have to go back to the drawing board here for BLG and say, hey, how do we try and disrupt what Weibo have got going on here? It's tough from a game state like this when your opponents have the champions that they do with these already. Both of those Rift Heralds having gone over to Weibo have been huge in accumulating this lead. 21 minutes on the clock means Baron is now on the table. If you get another big yeah. couple of picks, if you get another big win in one of these team fights, that could hyper accelerate the state of the game again, even more so than normal because of the presence of Belvan. I think you're kind of just hoping now that Yagao and Elk can make some sort of a miracle happen. I mean, both those carries do have two items, so they are not so far behind. You know, Light kind of quietly farming away. He's on two items as well, of course. You don't really have anyone with an advantage, but you've got to hope that something goes bad here and Weibo starting up a Baron potentially. This could be an angle for BLG. We'll see if Weibo are going to stick on it. All right. Here we go, Weibo. Yeah. Nope. No, we don't. All right, backing away, looking for the opportunity for the engage instead. Root hits the Zaya, Elk getting away for now. Escapes the Q from the Aphelios from long range, but now Weiwei is going to look for Bin. If they can catch the Aatrox, it could be big, but Bin can slip away from that one. Yeah, and Elk had to use his Ghost and lost half his health there as well, so he did use both charges of the refillable potion. They could just go right back towards the Baron here, potentially, knowing that Elk is now low. It's very difficult for him to approach if he gets chunked out like that again. It's just going to be straight back to base, and I think once they clear out the vision, they're just going to start it. They're not going to give Elk the time to heal up. All right, BLG are going to have to try to stand and stop this. Ulti flies out from Aphelios, but the Moonlight Vigil will not connect on anybody. So Weibo is just going to walk this one back away. They're not so far ahead. They can just hard force Baron, so they don't want to throw the game. Shun now in danger, knocked up into the air. Equalizer over the top. Shun is down, and Weiwei's the one to put him there. Now, can they find any more? No, but with the enemy jungler out, with both enemy bot lane players critically injured, the Baron should be the call once again. And that's exactly how Weibo want to try and play this. Draw BLG, try and tease them a little so they want to get into the pit, try and get into River, and there's you get BLG coming through, they pull off, they immediately attack the people from BLG who are overextended, and that gains Baron now for Weibo. I mean, this is just beautifully played by Weibo. They don't have engaged, you start the objectives, you draw them in, you find the pick here with the knockup. Look at the equalizer, perfectly placed across all three members, cuts off any possible escape there from Shun. And with the jungler down, Elkanon really chunked out. The Shy <laughs> knows it, man. He is just having a game, and when this guy is on, no one can beat him.
I mean, he's just, he, every time we're seeing him pop up on the screen, he just looks calm, cool, collected. The state of the game has been going way Bo's way ever since they dug their way back into that hole at level one, eight to two now. Two to one Drake lead, up 6,000 gold. They got Baron for the next two minutes and 15 seconds. The next Drake is gonna spawn in under a minute. So they'll have total control over the rift to move towards soul form. Yeah, I think this is not an impossible net for BLG because the amount of control you can get over mid wave, pushing that in, especially with Inferno picked up for light, you start to set up your vision on this bottom side. You then have to try and come through these chokes to try and contest that and uh, that's a fairly sizable minion wave that Weiwei has on this bottom side to put that pressure to also allow them to set up that vision as they work their way through here. And you can see that Chao was pushing out top wave, but now he's going to move over towards mid because they're nervous oh, about a pick, but the equalizers are insane. Elk having to pop the ult here with the very start now, flashing away to survive, and Flight goes in aggressively to take out the enemy AD carry. Hawk's going to get burned up next to Shao, who pops the pop blossom defensively, and Ben's health bar is going to drop next. The Shy leads the charge, and Sean heads right back into the base. Only he and Yigal still stand as Weibo pick up three for free. Weibo are absolutely unleashed today, crushed through BLG, giving him no room to breathe at any turn. They're looking for more. Wait, wait, with a flash engage, the knock up on Yagao, and the Shy gets him with the flame spitter to finish the job. Shuns back underneath those Nexus turrets. They still have the entire rest of the team dead, only on just now respawning as the bottom lane inhibitor turret is broken. The inhibitor now under pressure as the same story gets told mid. Weibo still have their push going strong. Xiao Hu has rotated up into the top lane to get the last remaining lane moving towards that completely destructive state. They're not going to get it all the way there, but the rip belongs to Weibo. Sorry, when I said they could set up for Dragon, I meant you take <laughs> two in inhibitors, you just absolutely rinse BLG, make it impossible for them to play the game. I mean, Weibo. You just kill I them, man. Yeah, sorry, I could. I can't believe it. I've been away from the LPL for too long. Z-player, you know? kill yeah, yeah, there you go. That's the problem. What do you think? I mean, this is just, this equalizer is nuts uh, from the Shy. He has been so good all game long. Every equalizer feels like it's perfectly placed. And then in goes Light and turns off Elk, gets in, knocks him down, and they just pile in for more. Insane stuff from Weibo. And I mean, the fact you're getting the Shy crushing Bin in that top side, you got you left uh, him hanging. <laughs> you got like, <laughs> he's completely fine in that bot side. It feels like for Weibo, you're in a great spot. And oh, not going to find Bin, yes. Yeah. Bin's going to be in some trouble here. The Shy has backup from Chris. The Maul's gonna keep Ben alive for an extra second, but as soon as that flame spitter comes back up, Xiao Hu makes his rotation over. The Shy popping the stasis just to make sure it got a little bit dicey there for a second, but they still get the job done. That is fair. He is 0-5, and the other side is 7-1, and one, so that's why it was a little bit close. But they do get the job done. And now you're going to get push on top side to make sure you can actually get in underneath this tower. And, I mean, how do you try and defend this as BLG? You've got nothing left in the tank. Oh, uh, you really can't. There's not much you can do here. I mean, the only reason it was really close is because it was all AP, but they're going to look for a pick. Crisp is the target, and they already got him. It cost a lot of ultis to do it. So Weibo now might look for something, despite the fact that they've immediately lost a man. They go for the knockup, but it won't hit Shun. On still trying to play that interference role, allowing the rest of his team to fall back. Yeah, the Shy is back now, though, and he's 16. The Equalizer just about ready, it looks like. Maybe 10, 15 seconds on that cooldown, and when that is up, if he places a good one, it's going to be lights out for BLG. So BLG are going to have to be respectful, have to be careful about it, as Weibo will just take away the jungle. But even if you don't, right? Even if Weibo just ping-pongs these wave backs and forwards forever, it's like, three minutes until you get an Infernal Drake yeah. for this style of composition is yeah. absolutely insane. You're then going to have full control as well for like minute and a half with the Barons up. Like you have this game in the palm of your hand as Weibo and it's on BLG to find that moment, find that pick with Sean, with Yago that can try and turn the tides. Here. And the way this game is gone, I got so many questions for how the rest of the series is going to yeah. go now, too, because you're saying, okay, Aatrox into the Shy's Rumble has not been an answer. We try to ban the Jarvan, take the Vi. Okay, well, they'll just play Be Beldeth and do perfectly fine with it. Weiwei was out-tempoing Shun like the entire game. It seems like Weibo have answers. We were watching the teams talk about coming into this game and how big the competition is here now that you're into the top four, and Weibo have done their homework. And I think when you look at, like, BLG, the fact that they set the record for, like, the best win 
win a record in the LPL for a split ever, people go, oh, they should be the consistent winners. But they forget that the fight between these two in summer was incredibly close, going two to one in favor of BLG. Weibo have taken down teams like JDG. They are monsters and they want to finish this. TP is coming in as Shun tries to engage on Xiao Hu. It immediately goes golden to get himself away. Flashing right back out of the scan of the week as now Weiwei is coming in from the side. A lot of damage back onto Shun and he's going to die to Xiao Hu. Light now free firing back onto On who engages without support from the rest of the team. Weiwei is going to do the same, but Weiwei is fed and BLG's dead. Ben can't get out. Light's gonna put him in the ground. Weiwei jumps in over the wall. Elk is the last man standing, but he's Zaya without an ulti. It's gonna be a hard job to get away from this when he tries to do it, but Weiwei's got a lot of damage resistance. Weibo, get it done. Game number one. It's a stomp here in the semifinals, and they're gonna start this series off strong. Weibo want to tell a different story here today taking down BLG in style and making sure that everyone needs to take notice of the LPL 4th seed. What a birthday present to himself from the shy. <laughs> He's like, no one got me anything good. I'm going to get myself a rumble game, go godlike, and absolutely toast Bin up, get a couple solo kills, and I'll have some cake after two. <laughs> it's time to go back to the lab for BLG game number one didn't work out how it should have. The level one looked like things should be going great, but Weibo just had a plan for him the whole way through. To break down more about how it happened, let's toss things back over to the desk.